Hi, Internet viewers. This is Frank Rauscher again. We're at the stage of sealing the bird so that we could start painting it so we can do all the markings and everything else that I want to do to uh, finish the bird. Uh, one of the things I do want to make uh, comments on, uh, I will be showing you a video of some of the results that some of my subscribers have done with uh, some of the videos that have uh, taken place that I put out there for you and the results. So uh, that will be forthcoming. Uh, I had spoken to a couple of them and they had uh, given me permission to show their, their pictures and what have you, the results of some of these and uh, one of them is this project here and another one's a wren so i will uh get that on another video here and get that published to you so that you could see how some people uh, have made some progress within my uh, videos which is great you know I'm, I'm glad to see that and if anybody uh, does have any pictures you want to send me in regards to uh, the work they have accomplished uh, through my videos. I'd appreciate it because I'll publish it so that everybody else could see it. And if you give me permission to do that, I, I, I'd i like to get that out. So at least uh, you could see that uh, some people are getting somewhere with a video. So uh, just wanted to uh, let you know that. Uh, I'm going to be covering today uh, the ceiling of the bird. Uh, originally, uh, the bird, we dusted it out. And let's see, I don't know if I have it here still. Uh, yeah. We, we used a, a mandrel with, uh, horse hairs at the end. And this is, this is ideal if you, uh, uh you know, if you have it. Uh, you don't want to use anything wiry or anything like that. This is strictly horsehair. And there's other ones. There's a, even softer ones than these. And what I do is I go through and I dust out. Uh, I do the whole carving like I did in the last video. And this cleans it out real well. And I, my other suggestion was, if you didn't have that, get an old toothbrush and just brush everything out. And it gets all the dust out so that all the markings we put in with the burning and everything else really comes up clean. And when we go to paint, all that will be defined better. Uh, you'd be surprised how much dust gets into the crevices on your carving. So I, I definitely want to do that. The other thing I mentioned in the last video was that uh, as far as the beak, uh, what you want to do is sand the beak a little bit after you use the super glue on it. I, I also mentioned that on the last video. You put, and when you use it, you want to use, and I'll do this again just as a follow up. You want to use the yellow super glue. And I don't know if I stated this in the last one. I get this at the dollar store. You can get like two for a dollar or something like that. And it's, it's watery. It's, it's not, like there's a gel one, it's a green container. You don't want that one at all. But this one here really works out well. And you just want to squirt just a little bit onto the beak and you use the front end of this, which is like a, a plastic applicator. And you just spread it around. You don't want to really uh, get a whole lot. And if you ever do, just get your bird upside down so that if it drips, it drips down. You don't want that to drift into your burn or anything like that, you know. So this is ideal. You just get a very little bit and you spread it around until you got the whole thing coated and you, you got it under control. You'd be surprised how fast it comes out and then you got yourself a mess with a lot of glue running around. You don't want to do that. So it, even before we seal it, we're sealing it with super glue because what it does, it gets into the pores of the wood. And then 
once you sand it and everything, it fills it in like it's, it gives you like a bony structured look. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Uh, I'm going to go through some sealers that I use and I wish I could say I could get it out to you. I do have them, but I can't mail them out because it, by uh, postal services uh, laws, uh, I can't send anything in, in a, that's uh, in a aerosol can type. So uh, I'm going to give you the information and uh, I will give you some sources as well, but uh, I can't provide it. I used, to, I thought I would be able to, but I found out that I can't go anywhere with it because as soon as I say that I'm mailing that type of uh, item out, uh, the Postal Service will not let me do that. Uh, but you can get this in different places. I started out with, and I'm going to show you, this is Krylon Spray. It's a clear, and it's a called Crystal Clear. It's an acrylic uh, setup. And I original number on it, which I don't think you can get anymore, started out as 1301. And if you ever see any carving books that had referred to this before, uh, that that was a, a number for years that Krylon used. And then it went to 51301. They put a five in front of it. And I don't know if the formula changed or what, but I have that and I use it and it's the same as far as I know. Then I'm going to give you the latest number. I think it's the latest number. And that is, it's K07120. And that is supposed to be the same thing as what it was before, which was the 1301 or the 51301. I've been using this for years, okay? Probably it's as old as I am, you know, and then some. But uh, I, uh, like I said, I can't get it out to you. And what I have, I, if you're local and you're close to me, I will sell it to you, but I can't mail it to you, okay? And I'm going to go and talk about a couple different uh, sealers, okay? Uh, as far as the Krylon spray goes, there are sources for it. You can get it from Dick Blick, and that's a paint, like an artist supply company. You can check with them, and I'm pretty sure they have it. And you can also get, go with Amazon, and I believe they have it as well. So there are the two. Now, there are other products out there, like uh, I'm not sure of the results on all of them. And somebody was kind enough to tell me some other items, but for the life of me, I can't find it. And if anybody who uh, sees this video and had sent me information before, uh, please do again uh, for some odd reason uh, uh, in some of the comment sections. I did get uh, other uh, sources of sealers that were used that everybody was real happy with. So I want to try to make sure that uh, you guys can get all the information that I can possibly get out to you that will give you good results. Depth, I know, has something, but I'm not sure. Some, some sprays it, it, like with the Krylon spray, it goes into the pores and it seals it, okay? Now, when you burn, you do get some sealing uh, process going on there too. But to get the whole piece, I, I spray it with Krylon spray. And, uh, and with this can, I hold it up around six inches away. And the owl that we're doing, if you look at this, this is changed in color slightly because I sprayed it 
and I did it about six inches away when I sprayed it. I sprayed the whole thing. Usually what I do to uh, minimize me getting sprayed, I spray the whole bird and I turn it around and I hold the tail, okay? Then, I, even though it's, it's wet and everything else, then I spray the tail and I put this down generally on a, on a piece of wood. You don't want to put this near plastic because the Krylon spray will start dissolving the plastic and it, it, it may even end up as part of your carving and you don't want that. So either you can put it on a piece of cardboard or you can put it on uh, uh, wood and I let it dry. And I usually, I usually do it overnight. Like uh, I'll, I, I really should have uh, got this video out a day before now. And I didn't because I let it sit and then I really wanted it to dry. And I, you, you, in 20 minutes, they say you could go on it, but I, I really don't push that. So uh, this has all been sprayed. And like I said, I hold it about six inches away and I, and I sprayed a can on, you know, the, the acrylic uh, uh, sealer on it. And, and it, it does a real nice job. I, I always liked it. Now, I'm going to talk about other products. Just a couple, not that many. Uh, that's one of them. The other one is Gesso. Uh, you've probably hear, heard me badmouth Gesso. But uh, I used to use Gesso and... Uh, I'll give you my reasons why and why it, it's, it works. It, it does work. It's a very heavy, heavily consistent, uh, it's almost like a white heavy paint. And uh, you paint it on and it, you have to water it down. It's a very heavy consistency. And uh, sometimes you can lose all your detailing if, you, if it goes on heavy enough. It'll just fill in the voids. And you don't want that. Or at least I didn't want that. So, but if you talk to some of the professionals that really do this and know, know their business, uh, they use gesso. Okay, so uh, as much as I badmouth it, you learn from everybody, and uh, uh, I, I've i heard them say that they use that religiously. Now, uh, I I would water it down to maybe uh, uh, a quarter uh, of, well, I should say 25% uh, water and very little gesso. And, and that it, I can't say exact amount, but it, it's watered down. And then uh, it, to me, it's like guaranteed that it won't fill the voids as much. Okay. Uh, how they use it, I would say uh, you may want to, uh, I, I can't, I can't say everybody uh, would know all, all of it. Uh, if there are people that, uh, you know that use gesso and are happy with it, please let me know how, how they handle it and if they're satisfied with it. Like I said, a lot of the professionals uh, like it, and they I know they use it, but how they use it and what percentages they water it down, or maybe uh, they're just happy with it is uh, the way it is, but uh, I know uh, some of them use it. I've stayed away from it. And the reason why I, I've done that is I do some tricks with uh, my carving. After I get it uh, sprayed and sealed, I use a Krylon, not a Krylon, uh, yeah, uh, acrylic, excuse me, uh, titanium white paint as my sealer on top to get it all white. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And then after that dries, what I do, if 
even after I paint the, the piece and everything else, I sometimes want to come back in with a burning pen and you got to watch the temperature and you could go in and shadow things with the burning pen. And you have to learn how to control the temperature so that you're not burning through. You're just, you're, you can get shadowing going on. And it doesn't lift up. If uh, I've tried gesso before and what happens when I go with the burning pen and I go in, it, it lifts and I see some of the white and that's what I don't want to do. I don't get that results when I use the Krylon, uh, uh, the acrylic titanium white, okay? And you're going to see me using that today. But uh, that's my way of doing it. But hey, learn from everybody. And like I said, I'm going to put this out. If anybody could feed me additional information on the sealers, I will publish a video to inform other people of the results. And one person did that, and I proceeded to lose it, or I would have given you the information now. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use my Krylon spray, uh, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I prime it with the white acrylic paint so that we could get moving on this. And once we get this on, uh, on the next video, we're actually going to start uh, marking out uh, the bird completely. But we need to seal it once with a Krylon spray. And when I spray it, I spray it to the point that it almost looks wet, you know, and making sure everything gets coated with that. And it's, you know, you're, you're like spraying about six inches away or so and stuff like that. And, uh, that, that works and, uh, and then let it dry. And I, I try to, uh, really make sure it's dry. I, I waited like 24 hours. That's why I'm a little late in publishing this video, but, uh, I'm going to start showing you how to mix the paint that I use and how we get the results uh, with the with the titanium white acrylic paint, okay? And, uh, and there are other ways of doing it too. And you can use gesso. Uh, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. So, and that's only because I go back and, and start burning over top of it. And, and that sort of defeated my uh, way of, handling it sometimes. I don't burn everything all the time, but uh, on a lot of different birds, you can put some shadowing in. And that, that's just something I developed along the way here. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to move the camera down and then I'll start showing you uh, what we do on, on uh, sealing or priming, I should say, uh, the bird for uh, paint. Okay. Okay, there we go. What I'm going to do is I use Liquitex, but any uh, acrylic, uh, this is titanium white acrylic, will do. Uh, I just uh, prefer uh, Liquitex. I've been using that for a number of years. I'm going to get about a, oh, we'll say a pea size of paint out and then what I'm going to do is add water to it and I'm going to go about this is a, a small cup here and I'm going to fill it about three quarters of the way then I'm getting a, an old brush because I like to work this stuff in as best I can so I'm going to mix this up really good. And I want to get the, all that paint dissolved into the water here so that we have one solid mix of paint. And you, uh, you want to do this really well. And uh, so you can see there's still a glob of it. And I'll just keep on trying to dissolve 
that as best you can. You want to really start that up, get the paint moving. Now, in some cases, uh, and not the owl here, but other birds, I, I water this down some more because I want a ghosting effect where some of the markings we have here, I want the, I want you to see that coming through and, and that enhances some of the looks on some of the birds. It's not in this case here. We're, we're looking for a white base. And we're not, we're actually going to add uh, a lot of uh, the markings. And I will show you some of them uh, before we end this video here of one I had done before. Now, I, I don't want this to go as a glob on any, on the, on the bird. And, and if I, if I get a glob, I just keep on uh, moving it you know, trying to brush it through. So here we go. Uh, it, it's hopefully it's, it's all blended through. I'm going to paint this bird. So I'll start with the head cause I can always hold the tail, uh, as we go, not to do finger painting here. So I'm coming in. And if you noticed, I try to brush one way and keep it moving. Hope you can see that. And I want to try to get a, a consistent uh, white if I can. And I'm going to come in behind the tufts and everything else. Right over into the eye, around the eye. Get everything coated there. And this is going to, this is going to fade out. <laughs> You'll You'll see this. We may have to do this a second time. Uh, I it, It's not going to stay white, white on the first coat. So don't expect miracles. And that's me. I, I, I like to put it on uh, not so heavy so that uh, as much as uh, it's watered down, um, uh, I'd rather it soak in and uh, dry and then come back and give it a second coat, okay? So uh, if you see it, it, it sort of fades away after a while and it looks like a ghosting effect. I usually do that on some birds to keep the, uh, the feathers showing, you know, the pattern that we have, especially like in the back here. See, I, I, I had, whitened that but it really didn't get white at all and sometimes I want that look to show through and then other times I, I don't in, the, in this case here we're just looking for uh, one thing I started to realize there is a glaze from that spray I should have sanded that but I'll do that later and then go back and paint over the beak. The beak has like a gloss that uh, even though we sand it that and it has that super glue on, it still acts like a, it's got a glaze on it. So uh, I will go back and I will uh, sandpaper uh, just the beak and then It'll take the paint easier that way, and I should have uh, done that right from the get-go here, but I wanted to let you know here. I'm starting to apply this a little heavier, but you can see it's just not, it's, it, it's not going to come on and give you the white that you want right off, okay? It's not going to turn white on you right away. And I'm doing right into the eye area and everything else, okay? Uh, and don't worry about that because we can clean the eyes right out. And I am going over the same area again. And for some of you, you, you may want to add more paint, you know, if you want to get it done faster. I, I prefer to do it 
is a watery effect. And if I have to do this a second time, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to do that too. So it's just my way of doing it. Uh, I could have added more uh, white in the mix and made it a heavier mix. So I've, uh, I've played this game too many times as far as painting goes. And you can see, look how, look how it like fades. Once it starts drying, it loses its white on here. And it starts going into a, almost showing right on through. And uh, that that's typical. Now I could have add, added more paint in there and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's something you, you can try, you know, you could, you could add like twice the amount of paint, but I just want you to make sure that you're moving it, you know, so here in the same area here, I'm hitting this like maybe for the second or third time up here and I don't want it lingering. I, I brush it out so that your detail is still there and not being filled in with paint. That's my main concern was that the detail stays up. And uh, that's what I try to do. That's why I keep it as watery as I can. I don't mind painting the piece several times to get the white I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to, I'm probably going to run out of paint here. And as I get down on this, it probably will get heavier because not everything totally dissolved. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pushing the paint sort of in one direction to uh, just give it a nice even coat as best I can. I'm not trying to uh, get super duper results, but I don't want the paint to linger to, uh, what's the name, uh, fill up with a glob of paint. That's what I'm really trying not to have it happen. So I could see it's getting a little thicker down in here. So if it I have a little water in this other cup over here. If it gets real thick, I will water it down, but I don't think I'm thick enough yet. And I'm going to come through. You can see some of the paint just laying there, and I'm, I always move it. I don't want it just to sit in one spot. Okay. And even with as much as you can see, it, it just lightens up. Even up here, as much as I did on the first coat, it's not getting there. So, but that's fine. That's fine by me. It's, uh, it's a little bit of double duty in the sense that uh, um, I'm not letting my uh, paint... Uh, be so heavy so that I'm pretty sure uh, it's not filling up all the detail that I started with. And you can see I'm running out of paint now. And that's good. That's just the way I work it. But uh, if you guys want to experiment and add more paint to it and cut it down in less time, hey, f feel free to do that. Okay, so now that I did that, I'm going to sit that down for a second here, and I'm going to go back, and I'll add a little bit more, that's almost like a two peas in there, size paint. I'll fill it up three quarters of the way. One of these trays. And 
I even made more of this over into this next tray just to help out. There we go. I'll move some of that and I'll add more water so that I have a heavier consistency. See how that paint, it's, it's real globbed up. So I will come in, add more water. come in here and mix this this is a little heavier than what i started out with okay so i may get a faster coating on this so i'm going to come back up here again and i'm pushing this you can see how really thick it is now and i'm just going to make sure that it's going on even and not globbing up in any one spot. Hope you could see this. Um, been notorious lately for getting out of camera range, and uh, and I apologize for that. I had to make a couple of videos over again because uh, what I was trying to show you went out of camera range. So I'm coming in here, and you'll see it'll start staying white. And uh, I try to do a, a build-up of what's going on here. Ooh, see that? That's a real glob of paint. So I'm going to push that. In fact, I may even get a little water on my brush and then just move it. And I got all this to do yet. But anyway... The idea is to keep the paint moving and don't let it linger in any one area because you don't want a glob of paint filling the voids that you, you made with your detailing with the burning. So by keeping the paint thin enough, you uh you, you it doesn't happen it doesn't build up you don't have to be as concerned about uh losing your detail now i'm going to get down and hold the tail and i'm going to get this in here hope i'm in camera range on all of this and and I don't want any globs sitting out there. So that is my major concern is to uh, get this coated. Now, in some cases, I'm going to have to come back. I know I've been going in one direction with, with uh, the paint. But if you have to get into the nooks and crannies, you know, you can go the opposite way and push up a little bit, but most of it you want to come down this way in one direction. Okay, now I'm going to spin this around before I lose total control of holding this, and I'm going to come in. After a while, you'll end up with a snowy owl, <laughs> if we're lucky. And if it gets real thick, I usually keep a little bit of water in the cup here. And if it really builds up to the point that it looks like it's too, too thick, I water it down. Okay. So I'm just trying to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of one that I've done before. And uh, it's... Uh, has some markings on it that we're gonna, you're gonna end up on the next video of putting on, and I'll show you how to do that too. But this is a, this is pr just priming it, and we want we paint it white so that we have a, a controlled uh, base that we don't have. We don't really want to see the markings, other than 
you want to see what the the feather patterns are because you're you're going to have to keep the markings inside the feather patterns uh and uh that that's a must so you will be seeing some of this anyway ghosting through and that's good because you're going to have to paint different patterns inside the feathers now uh, one of the videos that I will publish here soon will be a, uh, one of the gentlemen, and I had spoken about this before when I had uh, done a class, when I was teaching classes, I should say, uh, was that he finished the bird on the burning end of it and liked it so much that he stopped. He just liked the looks of the bird after we got done painting it. I mean, after we got done burning it. Excuse me. I'll get my uh, verbiage here right. So, I'm going to show you a piece uh, shortly here uh, with that in mind. It's, uh, it's a... Uh, a piece that he finished burning and he liked it so much the way it was he did not do this he, and, and and i've had i'm going to add a little more water in here and uh and here and he uh and and it's happened a couple of times in the course of uh burning the style we use and the way we do it, uh, the bird looks interesting without without the paint on it, believe it or not, if you like that look, you know. And uh, that is what this gentleman did. He, he decided to quit, and I will show you what that looks like as well, okay? So I'm getting down to the end here, and we're starting to see that, white showing through it's still not there yet but i'm going to get it close and then what i want to do is uh i'm gonna let you finish it all because uh this gets a can be time consuming you're you're trying to get it to its consistent white and i just want to show you some of how white we want to get it. and But the biggest fallacy that we have, if you just got a glob of paint and just put very little water in it, and then if, if you don't spread it out and add maybe a little water, you're, you're going to get a blob that will lose all the detail that we put in there. Or, or you could, you know, it'll fill up all that detail that we had made originally here. And uh, it's defeating the purpose. Now you could see up top here, it, it's still not white yet. And that's fine in a way, because as long as I keep it not so heavy and it defines itself to show through, that's fine. I don't, I don't need it white, 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 you know, but I want it so that I can see some of the feathering showing through. And I'm going to try to show you one, but I have other additional markings on it uh, that uh, I've done already. And let's see. Let me come around here. Hold that. We're, get, we're getting close now. But I, the, like I said, uh, I can only stress that uh, you you don't want any globs, okay? And don't worry about the paint on the eyes. That, I'll show you how to clean up as fast as you could say, but that's not, a, that's not an issue. So I'm going to get down to a point where I can't paint unless I start painting my fingers, and I'm going to stop short here soon. And then I'm going to switch over to another piece I had done earlier, much earlier. 
And, uh, but I want you to see the white I'm getting into here. And, and the top of the head seems to fight me here a little bit, and that's fine too. I just want that to sort of look the way it is, if you can see that area here. Because you got to put patterns into these feathers, you know. <laughs> that's where the the challenge will be when it comes to painting. Uh, these feathers here. The, the bird is a very busy bird when it comes to paint. It's uh, one of the things when I got into doing this originally. Now here I'm getting into the nooks and crannies of down below here. But you, you're you gonna come to a point, and this is where I'm at now, where you don't wanna handle the bird. So I would suggest doing this. Uh, you, uh, you get a the bird at a point and you get the white and you can see most of it here. Um, I can, I'm not gonna be able to get it all on camera here, but you wanna get it white like this, okay? And over here, if it goes through, that's fine too. Uh, the, this here could show through a little bit as you need to see what the feathers are look like. You don't want to paint it so white on these ones we didn't raise that you have to paint inside it. And if you paint it too white, then you uh, you, you can't see what the feathers are, at least uh, the way we burned it on the top here. So I'm trying to get all of this so it, looks like it's ghosting through a little bit, but I don't want any buildup. That's the only thing I'm concerned. Now, I'm going to just stop here for the moment. I'm going to lay this like on a cup and let that dry. And then after that dries, I mean, you can get a hair dryer and speed this up and hit it with a hair dryer. Make sure you're not hitting it on the paint or the brush. And then what you can do is after it's dried, just handle this side and paint both top and bottom and underneath so that everything's painted white, okay? Let me just do this. I'm gonna clean my brush out. And that's one thing you always wanna do. You don't want the brushes saying, sitting around because they, they tend to, uh, uh, get hardened on there as well. And then what I do is I get a paper towel and I get all the paint out and then I go back and do it again. I'll come back in here just to get as much paint out as I can. And then I let that sit and I clean my brushes out. I hope you're seeing this. It's just getting it so it's nice and clean, okay? That's not one of my best brushes. But what I'm gonna bring into the picture now is, here's a bird that's been painted all white, all the way through. And what I'm asking you to do is we're gonna go in and put this barring in all throughout the bird where we need it. And there's different patterns on different uh, levels of this uh, bird, and this is all white. So you can see, even this white here will get lighter, okay? Because, not lighter, but it will fade, I should say. And uh, this is what I'm looking for right here, okay? Uh, is is like a white, basically like right in this area here, and you can see the face. And if it if it's not white, white, I'm not all that worried about it, okay? Because we're going to paint over this anyway. We, you, you, there's going to be a lot of coloring going on in here and, and stuff like that. But this is the marking that we're going to have to go in and produce on here after this dries. So I want you to concern yourself with getting it white, but not like 
you got to go so crazy with it. And uh, if you see what's happening here now, and I hope you can, I'm going to bring this up closer so that you can see it. Now, I, I need to get more in here, definitely, but I'm going to quit right there. But I see a little bit of paint, like, gathering up, so I'll just wipe it a little bit. You know, I, I don't want heavy paint in any one area. I, I want it to be nice and even as best I can, okay? So I'm going to leave you with this in mind for the moment, and then uh, when we come back, this should be dry. So you can do one of two things, and a lot of times uh, when I paint, I use hair dryers, and, and I just hit it, and I keep on going. I can put maybe 60 coats of paint on in an hour just by using the hair dryer. You put it on and dry it. You know, you, there's levels of paint sometime uh, that you have to do on certain birds. You know, on the, the key ones on this one is just like what I just showed you a minute ago, where you, pattern, you put a lot of patterns within the feathers itself. And let me shift this a little bit and get this off of here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the pattern, uh, the pattern that I used. And these are different patterns for different feather groupings in here. And I'm going to show you how to do that and, uh, put them on after it's painted white. So, uh, if you hang in there with me, I will try to get you to get this in a real good shape. And then uh, when we get done, uh, and like on the next video, I'll show you what the original looked like. Okay, finished, just to give you an idea. But uh, it's, a, it's a staging effect. We get it white like this, and then we start putting the markings on. And then we start building paint, especially like in the face. The face gets built up uh, and we, uh, most of it's the markings. There's a lot of markings in the, in the Great Horned Owl. But I don't want you losing some of the details. See how this is ghosting in in here? I need you to do that. This is a little too bright and I will go back and uh, hit that with another uh, coat of white. But it should look like this when you get done. You can actually see the feathers in there still outlined so that if you had to paint one of the feathers, you could see it through the shape, okay? So uh, hang in there with me. <laughs> I, uh, I use a Krylon spray, I mean Krylon paint, Liquitex, uh, acrylic paint. I don't know what I'm saying anymore here. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a, a acrylic Liquitex paint, and what I used was the titanium white. Now, if you just happen to have other paints, don't worry about it. Any white will do, but the titanium white is what you want to use, and it could be another brand. I just... I just like Liquitex. i have uh, been using it for 50 years, maybe. So uh, stay with that and uh, whatever you have and utilize that because it'll work. It will work. And another trick that you can too, say when we mix paints and we want to, use this some more like right now I want to stop because I need this to dry and then I need to do the tail afterwards uh, I will get some saran wrap I'll put a drop or two I'll just come in here like this and put a drop or two of water on top of the the paint I'll cover it with saran wrap and that'll preserve it to do it maybe in a couple hours from now or even the next day. And then all you need to do is stir it up and you don't have to throw this paint away. You can still utilize it 
uh, and just by sealing it so that the moisture doesn't go away and the paint doesn't set up. And then all you have to do is come in with a brush later and mix it, and then you're ready to go again. So uh, that's another tip to preserve your paints because a lot of times you can't get everything done and you uh, want to come back to your work, but you don't want to throw the paint away. So you can save some of the paint just by putting saran wrap over it. Just a couple of drops in each tray. So hope you got something out of this video. We will be marching on to be doing a lot of pattern work on the next video. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, I would ask you to give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you would subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate that too. And if you could pass the word on to your friends who may be interested and want to try, uh, I've, I've done a lot of different birds and some animals and what have you, that uh, if you can put them onto my channel, I'd appreciate that too. Now, as far as paints, I do sell paints, but I don't have Liquitex, and that's fine too, like I said. Uh, but... Uh, if you need paints or brushes, uh, I have inexpensive brushes, and uh, and I could put you on to those too. Um, the only thing I can't get you is the sealer, the Krylon spray. You either Dick Blick, which is Nord Supplier, or Amazon uh, to get the Krylon spray. Uh, that's your source there. And uh, if you... Uh, need anything as far as uh, the kits, uh, the patterns, uh, the, the kits contain everything, the feet, the eyes, everything, uh, and the blank and the pattern. And uh, if you need any tools um, as far as the burner or the micro grinders uh, that I use for taking the, the material down, I have those available. So uh, I also have a catalog. And if anybody's interested in that, please write to me. And my email address is Rauscher, R-A-U-S-C-H-E-R, -E Frank, F-R-A-N-K, 7, at gmail.com. And, and if you need some help or you're not sure of something, uh, you can contact me through there and uh, we, you know, I, I'll gladly try to answer any of the questions you may have if I uh, confuse you in any of these steps, okay? So uh, I'll see you on the next video and we will march on and we're getting closer and closer uh, as we go. Uh, now my, my problem is I got to find something to mount the bird on here eventually so that I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, well, we're going to get it so it's mounted and ready. It looks like it's we're going to fly. So bear with me and we will continue on. Thanks a lot.